Shalom Havarim. Welcome, friends in Hebrew. My name is Tony Pino, and today we are going to continue in the book of Galatians. Today, we are going to start chapter one. Last time together, we did an introduction to the book, and so that lasted about 12 minutes, and that's kind of the way I want each video to go, trying to do an overview of the book to capture the main essence of what Shaul is trying to share to the community there in Galatia. And as I shared with you last time, I believe that this book falls right in between chapters 14 and 15 of the book of Acts. And so Shaul has completed his first missionary journey. It's about 48 to 51 CE, somewhere in between there. He meant he has not gone up to the Jerusalem Council yet. That gathering has not occurred. And I'm going to show you why within the book as we go through it. But Paul is addressing some specific doctrinal issues there in the assemblies of Galatia. What do we do to, with these Gentiles as they come into our communities? How do we call them equal to us? How do they enter the kingdom? There are some problems that are occurring. So Paul, being an expert lawyer, he's going to straighten it out for us. Amen. So come with me now as we go to chapter one of Galatians. Amen. So here we are in chapter one of the book of Galatians, starting with verse one. Paul, an emissary, sent not from men or by man, but by Yeshua, the Messiah and God, the father who raised him from the dead in all the brothers with me to Messiah's communities of Galatia. Grace to you and shalom from God, our father and our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. I believe verse three is a proclamation that Yeshua is deity that he is of the same essence and nature as the father, though distinct and separate. The word Lord is curious, amen, which is used thousands of times in the Tanakh to express Yahweh. It's used within the Tetratramagran, within the four letters. And so when you look at the LXX, the Septuagint, you will see curious thousands of times for the divine name. And how this is expressed here is why I connect the two together. Paul is declaring the deity of Yeshua here with the Father. Amen. Verse 4, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 6, I am amazed that you are so quickly turning away from the one who called you by the grace of Messiah to a different good news. Not that there is another, but only some who are confusing you and want to distort the good news of Messiah. So what is the good news of Messiah? That his work alone is what saves you, that he is the true Messiah of Israel, that he is the King of Israel, amen, and that the work on the cross and his resurrection was more than enough to take away your sins, to pay the debt that you owe the Father, amen, to give you the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and to fill you with his presence and give you eternal life. Grace is how you are saved through the grace of Yeshua. There is no other good news or message on how one gets saved, enters the kingdom. Amen. And so there are some that are distorting it and confusing people there in Galatia. But let's see how they are distorting it. Verse eight, but even if we or an angel from heaven should announce any good news to you other than what we have proclaimed to you, let that person be cursed. As we have said before, so I now repeat, if anyone proclaims to you good news other than what you received, let that person be under a curse. Am I now trying to please people's approval or win people's approval or God's? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Messiah, all right? So there are those that are preaching a different gospel, and in order for him not to please them, okay, he has to please Messiah. If he tries to please those who are bringing a different gospel or a different good news, he will not be pleasing Messiah. So his dedication is to Messiah and Messiah's message. Verse 11. Now, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the good news proclaimed to me is not man-made. I did not receive it from any human, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Yeshua, the Messiah. So it is through Yeshua, as we see 
in Acts chapter 9 that Paul understands that the one he was persecuting and those he was persecuting was actually Yeshua's Messiah, uh, community, and they were actually he was actually persecuting Yeshua himself. So he comes to the revelation that Yeshua is the true Messiah of Israel, the one who was called to fulfill all, right, all of those passages about Messiah to Israel, and this revelation came directly from Yeshua, and it didn't come from man. Okay, Verse 13, for you have heard of my earlier behavior in Judaism, how I persecuted God's community beyond measure and tried to destroy it. I was even advancing within Judaism beyond many my own age among my people, being a more extreme observer of my father's traditions. All right, so verse 14 is going to be very key because what was Shaul protecting when he was persecuting the community of Yeshua? He was protecting his father's traditions. You remember, Shaul is a high ranking lawyer within the people who run around with those of the Sanhedrin. I don't think that Paul was a member of the Sanhedrin, but he was within that circle. He's a high ranking lawyer. He sits underneath Gamliel. And so he is very advanced in what is called halakha, oral law, the very traditions that Yeshua would sometimes come in disagreement with and tell those perishim that they nullify the word of God with their traditions. Paul was a strict observer of these traditions. So there is nobody better for Yeshua to go to and express that, Paul, you need to re-examine these traditions because some of them nullify my word, and it's right here in the good news. It's right here in the good news where some of these traditions are going to nullify the word of Yahweh. And so he's setting things up for us to know and understand his letter. He's giving his pedigree here. Verse 15, but when God who set me apart from birth and called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me so I would proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with any human. I did not go up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, to those who were emissaries before me either. Instead, I went away to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. All right. So obviously, Shaul Paul's going to have trouble that he once persecuted the believers in Yeshua. Now he becomes a believer. And again, they're going to they're going to struggle with that. He's also going to have to go away for a while, I believe, to examine everything uh, that uh, he is going to need to know in order to bring the good news properly, to bring the message of the gospel, that grace message that he so eloquently brought. Amen. So it says here in verse 18, then three years later, I went to Jerusalem to visit with Peter and I stayed with him 15 days, but I saw no other emissaries except Yaakov, Jacob, the Lord's brother. And what I am writing you before God, I do not lie. Then I went to the regions of Syria or Syria and Cilicia, but I was personally unknown to Messiah's communities of Judea. They only heard or kept hearing the one who once persecuted us now proclaims the good news he once tried to destroy. So they were praising God because of me. All right, so as we can see here in chapter one, He's giving this introduction. He's letting you know that there is this good news message that is being distorted. He's letting us know his uh, background, that he not only knows the Torah, but he was extremely strict on the traditions of his fathers. Amen. The halakha of the day, the oral law of the day. And so this, again, we know in keeping line with the words of Yeshua and the message of Yeshua, that Yeshua was a Torah observant Jew. Otherwise, he would have sinned. Remember, we define sin by the law of Moshe. And so the law of Moshe tells us what sin is. Okay. But when the Parashim had issues with Yeshua, it wasn't about the law of Moshe, it was about their oral traditions. Now, we have to understand that in the first century, they had conflated their oral traditions to be on the same level as Torah. So when they say, oh, you violate the laws of Moshe, you don't follow the laws of Moshe, you have to examine because they held their oral traditions 
in many ways on the same authoritative level. Now, we know that when it comes to the traditions of men, the halakha, those are not divine. The only messages that are God-breathed or the commandments that are God-breathed is what was given at Mount Sinai. Amen. What was given at Mount Sinai was really not Moshe's laws. It was Yahweh's laws. And again, Yeshua would have been there giving them to the people of Israel. And of course, there would have been a mixed multitude there with them. Amen. Joining the community. This is all an example of how salvation by grace works, because not only did Yahweh deliver the nation of Israel out of Egypt by grace, but he delivered the mixed multitude out of Israel. I'm sorry, out of Egypt by grace. Okay, they weren't commanded to be circumcised. They weren't commanded to do anything but to walk in faith with Israel. And that's the pattern that we know and understand today in the new covenant. This is the pattern that Paul is learning. In the first century, it would have been very hard to learn that. It would have been very cloudy in a sense because of how they conflated the traditions of men. Okay, they were on the same level in many ways. The Sanhedrin ran that area like an iron fist, okay? They were very strict, all right? Yeshua said that they, the Parashim, brought a heavy yoke to the people. And so by the time of the first century, they made following Torah very heavy. Yeshua came to make it light, okay? He said, take on my yoke, for my yoke is light. And his yoke is his oral tradition of law on how to follow the Torah. Amen. And so as we prepare to go into chapter two, we must keep in mind that Paul is getting this revelation. And the good news is about grace in Yeshua. That's the good news. How does someone get saved? They put their faith and trust in Yeshua alone. Amen. So next time together, we will begin chapter two. So until we meet again, everyone, shalom.